Meet our What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. Thank you. And now, a delightful young man who has written what promises to be a very exciting new book called With Kennedy, which will be out in September. However, if you are, as I am, too anxious to wait until September, there is a condensation in this month's good housekeeping on the stand this week. And here he is, the gentleman himself, Pierre Salinger. Thank you very much, Arlene. And now, one of the finest musical comedy stars in the United States, in addition to that, a very pretty young lady, and probably most important for me, someone that's had some experience in this show, <laughs> Miss Phyllis Newman. You know, the gentleman that I'm going to introduce has been on the show for so long that he's been introduced in probably every conceivable way as a businessman, as a creative person. I'm going to introduce him as an adorable cutesy pie pussycat. Bet it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> Pierre, it's awfully nice to have you with us. And here is our dapper, demoniacal doyen of this little clam bake, John Charles Patrick Crowen Daly. <laughs> Very good, Pussycat. I didn't know you could get it all right like that. Well, Phyllis, it's lovely to see you here. Thank to you. grace the panel with Arlene. And I must say, Pierre, it's an honor to have a former White House news secretary in one of those panel chairs. And we hope that we give you an interesting half hour, which Thank I think you, you find we do. I think you find we do. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. But now let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Lynn Jordan, right, ma'am? <laughs> Miss or Mrs. Jordan? Mrs. Mrs. Jordan, and where are you from? Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. Nice to have you with us, Mrs. Jordan. May I present the panel? Now, would you join me over here, please? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Well, we can tell you that uh, Miss Jordan is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin things with Arlene Francis. Uh, Mrs. Jordan, you have a delightful tan. Does that mean that your job keeps you outdoors? Oh, uh, yes. Uh, do you, uh, whatever your service is, can men and women both use it? Yes. Uh, does your job uh, require some skill? Yes. Are you ever near or in the water when you are performing your service? Yes. Do you uh, do something other than rescue or life-save in your job? Yes. Do you ever go underwater? Yes. Are you a deep-sea diver of any sort? No. Nope. One down and nine to go. Pierre Salinger. Is uh, your service something that I might want to use? 
Yeah. You could. I mean, given the you proper set of circumstances, you could evade Knowing yourself about me as my background, I still might be able to. Yeah, you might. Yeah. Uh, does your service have anything to do with uh, animals of any kind? Yes. Uh, does your service have anything to do with animals that would frequent water? Uh, by which you mean here those animals which would normally be found in... Or about. Or about the water. Right. I don't think we can give you a yes on that. We, this would not be necessarily an attribute of the animals that we have in mind. Miss Newman. Have we established whether or not you're in some sort of performing or sports field? No, it has not been established. May we establish? Are you in some sort of performing or sports area? Yes. Yes. Uh, do people pay an admission to see you? Yes. And you work in some way near the water with an animal of some sort? Right. But the animal is not uh, normal. Uh, is it an act of some kind? What? Is it an act of some kind that you do with an animal? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, I think we'd call it that. A long time ago, I read about someone who jumped... No, what did she do now? Jumped she out of the moon. No, no. <laughs> she dove off a uh, diving board with a horse. Did you ever dive off... <laughs> I must, I'm going to throw all these over anyway, just for exercise, but uh, congratulations, Phyllis. I never and... forgot that. It, it always stuck in my head. They do it in Atlantic City all yes, the time. Yes, exactly. It's extraordinary. And Bennett, you put your finger right on it. It's Steel Pier at Atlantic oh. City, and uh, Miss Jordan gets on a horse, and the horse goes up on the elevator, and she climbs a ladder. It'd be much more fun if the horse climbed the ladder, and she went up on the elevator <laughs> to a 40-foot platform, and then she riding horse into a tank of 10 feet of water in it. And down they go and under. I trust I was right, Pierre, that if you were in Atlantic City, you would be found in the, in the immediate area. Might be found. <laughs> Didn't do you any harm. If I wasn't hiking up and down the uh, boardwalk. We, we spent two hours once trying to persuade Mitch Miller to do this. He was uh, with us on the steel pier, and uh, we thought it would be a great sight for that beard to ride on a horse. <laughs> but uh, he wouldn't fall for it. No. But the interesting thing is, diving off a 40-foot platform into 10 feet of water, all that, that uh, you wear as protective gear is a, is a head protector. Yes, Otherwise, just wear a bathing suit. How so. do you train a horse to do that? Well, it's the process. You there just is push a them off. <laughs> no, no, they, they must go on their own will. They, they keep little by little. Yes. I have my own right. system. Just don't give them a drink of water for about 10 days and then take them up and say, there's the water there. But it isn't that. But Steel Pier is lucky to have such a pretty gal to do such a daring Thank thing. You. And thanks for being with us. Nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now we'll meet our next contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Lawrence Burris, right, sir? I was having a little private conversation. I noticed that Mr. Burris was a lion, and we had all the conventioneers here. But you last didn't get here last week, you got here this mm -hmm. week. So you didn't get caught in the traffic. No, there. indeed. Where are you from, sir? Waverly, Ohio. Waverly, Ohio. Nice to have you with us, Mr. Burris. May I present the panel? Now, will you join me over here? We'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. <laughs> All right, panel, we can tell you that Mr. Burris is salaried and deals in a product. And we'll begin things with um, Phyllis Newman. Um, Mr. Burris, might I use your product? Yes. If I used your product, would it make me either look or feel better? It could. It could. I would suggest he's being very generous. There is an application of the product which, under certain circumstances, might produce one of the results which you've just outlined, but I would not say that it necessarily has as its chief function to so do. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> if I had this product in my home and I had a two-story house, would I be more likely to keep it in the uh, um, bottom story of the house? Yes. If I were to go walking down the street holding your product in my hand, might people stare? No. 
No, I don't think they'd stare. Not, you know, particularly. One down in 90 go, Mr. Mr. Sir. Mr. Burris, is your product consumable? No. You're speaking here of oh, being eating, ingested. Eat your drink. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Is it a product that is made of metal? No. That is three down and seven to go, Pierre Salinger. Well, we've established Miss Newman could carry this product down the street, right? So yes. it's something that I could hold in my hand. Uh, is it made of um, some agricultural product, including wood? Could be. Could be. It could be made of other products, in other words. Yes. Uh, is it, uh, is this product have anything to do with agriculture? No. Nope. Four down and six to go, Phyllis Newman. Now, if I had this product in the bottom story of my house, uh, is it something that every member of my family might use? Yes. It is. If they used it, would they uh, take it from where it was, say, in the living room to where they were, or would they have to go to where the thing was? I mean, would they necessarily have to stay in locus with the product right. itself to use to it, or use could it. the product be taken, taken with it? Taken to wherever they wanted to use it. Now, you want a yes I or no the answer. I <laughs> <laughs> You said, could they take it with them? Was yes. that your question? Yes. The answer yes. would be yes. They mm -hmm. could take it with them. And my children might use it as yes. well. Mm -hmm. uh, is, it, uh, is it bigger than this? No. Smaller, I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Burris got the answer out before you got the correction in, which makes it five and five, Mr. Sir. Uh, Mr. Burris, if this product is ever carried outside the house by somebody, would it normally be visible to passers-by? Could be. It could be. But here again, don't put too much stress on the fact. It could be, but we do not insist that if you were just walking down the street and had the product, it would be uh, held in such a way as to make it visible. But we will agree it could be, and uh, nothing untoward would necessarily ensue. Is there anything at all dangerous about this product? No. No. Six down and four to go, Miss Francis. Is it a product that when it is in use comes in contact with the person? Yes. Uh, is it ever on the person? <clears throat> no. No. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Salinger. Is this a uh, product that... Uh, is used on specific occasions? Yes. And uh, when these occasions are not occasions, you don't use the product, is that right? Oh, well, you could. <laughs> no, actually, Pierre, there we, again, we might mislead you. When we say a specific occasion, we can think of many occasions when it might be your wish to use it, and to that degree, they would be specific and special, but we well, do what not What I'm trying insist. to get at, is it a seasonal product? Mm, no. no. Eight down and two to go, Miss Newman. Okay, I'm going to pick up where I left off. Oh, good. It's, <laughs> isn't that terrific? It's smaller than this. Yes. Is it something that is soft and pliable? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, so uh, now I have this thing like this. It's soft and it's pliable. Mm -hmm. And it does not, you said, I'm just recapping, you said it does not come in contact we with the body. We said it did. You said it did come in contact mm -hmm. with the body. Would I take this soft, pliable thing and maybe do something like that? Like, no, <laughs> like this? <laughs> yeah. That's nine down and one to go. No. Mr. Burris, uh, is this product used by equally by men and women? Yes. Uh, is it used by ordinary folks uh, not, rather than by just special citizens? Yes. Can be used by everybody. Has the product got anything to do with either a game or a sport? No. No. That's ten down and no more to go. And Mr. Burris makes soda straws. <laughs> well, we got a yes, Mr. Used in a sport. What? When I, they're used in a sport. When I was a kid, we used to blow spitball through them in our <laughs> geography. Field. And if you will remember, you... You try to get this accredited, and nobody would accredit it as a sport, so you go get away with that. But the interesting thing is, uh, Mr. Burris works for the Stone Straw Corporation, runs the Waverly, Ohio. Waverly, Ohio plant. But Mr. Stone invented the straw back in 1888, 1888 and it was hand-rolled and made with beeswax. Now it's made out of 
out of uh, pulp and paper well, and uh, also plastic and uh, plastic going into plastic quite a bit now but for what 30 or 40 years mr stone had a patent on straws and nobody else made them this is the stone uh, stone straw company corporation right Thanks. i'd like to suggest to you a two-headed straw for people that want to drink out of the same glass <laughs> Nobody's ever tried that. Wouldn't it be a good idea? Do they have a straw. base like this and then two branches? But you mean this is for people with two heads? But yes, of course. Oh, why <laughs> think we should accommodate our friends with two heads? Uh, really, uh, we have calculated that if the straws we produced uh, were put end to end, they would make roughly 25 round trips to the moon. For the Lord's sake. And uh, really, uh, <laughs> the plastic. Uh, Speaking of going to the moon, of course, uh, we have products that are on the moon in Surveyor. One, uh, the plastic tubing that was used for uh, insulation of wiring and stuff, actually in Surveyor 1, is now on the moon. So we're we real proud of it. You should be very proud of it. Congratulations, and thank you for being here. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, the, and now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger for which the panel is blindfolded. Blindfolds in place. Everybody yes, set? Yes, Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? As you know, a different form of questioning, one question at a time, in turn moving clockwise, and we'll begin things with Bennett, sir. Well, I have to get a suspicion off my mind. If you were to throw your arms around John Daly, would he be pleased? Me? <laughs> Miss Francis? I think John Daly should have answered that question. <laughs> it was answered correctly. Are you in the performing arts? No, she's me. What? Mr. Salinger. I don't know what the answer was, though. That was most no? yes. Oh. Me. <laughs> are you, uh, I, I, I would assume that you are in movies. Me. Miss Newman. Are you a, a, a beautiful, curvy lady? <laughs> See. <laughs> 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 Mr. Sir? Uh, well, I think we all have a pretty good idea. Should we say together? I think it's Jane Thank Mansfield. You. You're absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was afraid of that, Miss Jane, because all of our New York newspapers have big advertisements noting oh. that you were going to open it at Westbury, Long Island, Westbury on Tuesday. On Tuesday. Yeah. I was trying so hard, I didn't sound like me, did I? Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great show for Miss Jane to be in. Gentlemen prefer blondes. I do. Uh, that's typecasting, right? Oh, that's thank wonderful. you. We've been having such a good time five weeks now. All throughout Baltimore and, and Valley Forge, where I met a marvelous giraffe. <laughs> a marvelous what? A giraffe. A oh, giraffe. I've been playing such a game lately. You wouldn't believe what I've been doing. I've been having so much fun naming people who look like different animals. And I found a manager called a giraffe. His name is Ed Wine, and he's divine. <laughs> he looks like a giraffe? Yes. What do you look like? What do I look like? Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, I haven't, I haven't been, uh, become proficient in the game yet, and I'm not going to ask you what I look like. I promise you that. I might ask you what Bennett looks like, but I don't dare because he'd sue me for libel. Uh, you, I think he say. looks like something beautiful. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I know what Jane means, a well-made cauliflower. I think he's really precious. I, I don't know what. I'm going to think about what he looks like and let him know that I will, Bennett, really. Let me do that, know, and you Jack. can send a message through his wife, Phyllis. I'll let you have the <laughs> <laughs> We are now even, Bennett. Hello there. Hello there. It's a compliment to look like someone, though, because if you don't look like anything, you're not interesting at all. True. I'm glad we're not in color. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's blushing pink. Well, we wish you 
a, a successful a run in, in uh, uh, Westbury, Long Island, as you Thank had you. in uh, Valley Forge in Baltimore. And thanks very much for coming to visit Thank us. Thank you, John. Nice Thank you, you much. Bye. <laughs> You get good marks again tonight, panel. Congratulations. We'll have another contestant after this. And now to meet a final contestant, will you enter and sign in, please? Linda. Biedemann. Right, ma'am? Is it Miss or Mrs. Biedemann? Smith. It's Miss Biedemann. Yeah. You're a sophomore at the University of Cincinnati? Yes. Yeah. Right. But we're talking about what you do when you're not studying. Yeah. Right? Where are you from? Cincinnati. From Ohio. Cincinnati. Going to the University of Cincinnati, that makes sense. You have friends in the house. Oh, Miss Biedemann, may I present our panel? Yeah. Now, would you join me over here, please, ma'am? Yeah. And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Miss Biederman is self-employed and deals in a service, and we'll begin things with Pierre Salinger. Uh, this service, uh, is it a service that uh, both men and women would uh, avail themselves of? Yes. Uh, is it a service that would uh, generally make uh, you feel better? We would hope so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in performing this service, uh, do you use any kind of uh, apparatus or anything? Yes. Is this an apparatus that you can carry in your own hand? Part, partly, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah, not, not all of it. Not all of it. Uh, is this a metallic object? Is it made out of metal? In part. In part, yes. Part. Does uh, whatever this object is that you can only pick up part of, does it come in contact with the body of the people who you are serving? No. no. One down and nine to go, Miss Newman. Um, when you perform your service, do people come where you are yes. rather than you go to... Do people pay any kind of price or admission for your service? Sometimes. They do. do can more than one person avail themselves of your service at the same time? Yes. Do you wear something other than what you have... Uh, other than street clothes when you perform your service? Well, yes, I suppose so. Uh, it, uh, when you wear this, is it something that could be called a costume or a uniform? Yes, it could. It could. And you, do you work alone in conjunction with this apparatus? Well, with the apparatus itself, yes. Um, do you hold this apparatus in your hand and move it in some way? Or part of it in your hand and move it? Yes. Yeah. You don't do anything like twirling or anything like that? No. 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 We're running out of time. I just like we'll take a guess. Oh, well, have you got anything to do with a vehicle that moves either sideways or up or down? No. no I or reading or writing? I thought you might run an X-ray. Typewriter? No. No. Aren't no, you a uh, place of xylophone. No. <laughs> I said an X-ray machine or something. No. How about Drum. a rock and roll drummer? Drum. <laughs> Miss Peterman. Miss Peterman formed a group called the Blooming Lot, and she works with three young gentlemen, and um, it's parties, fraternities, and things like that. They use the guitar, she plays the drums. Thank you very much. It's very Thank nice you. to have had you with us. And Pierre Salinger, it's been nice to have you as our guest panelist. I've kind of used up all the time with everybody's permission. I'll say good night to everybody and thanks for being with us on What My Line. What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This is Johnny Olson speaking.